Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a garden hod. Well, I can already hear some of you out there saying, what on earth is a garden hod? A garden hod is essentially a basket that has wooden uh, platforms on each side or wooden ends and what it's used for is to harvest the vegetables from your garden. There are a lot of us that do gardening during the summer months and it's getting time to start harvesting all those vegetables, the tomatoes, the zucchini, the etc, etc, etc. So a garden hod is a really helpful device to be able to harvest these and you can wash them right in the basket, etc. It's a fun little project. So without further ado, let's head over to the bench and get this project started. Well, one of the main components of this project is the mesh for the basket. And what I have here actually is some honeycomb punched steel. Um, I actually bought this years ago for a different project and this is one of the off cuts. So this will work perfectly for me for the basket. If you don't have this sort of thing or you don't want to purchase it because it can be expensive, um, you can use anything like old garden fencing. You can use chicken wire, that sort of thing. Choose what you want, but you want to make it fairly rigid. This stuff is fairly thick. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this, just to prevent rusting and make it look a little better, is I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to spray paint it white on both sides of the steel. While we're waiting for the mesh to dry, we can do all of our layout. Now I have four pieces of poplar here. They are 7 sixteenths of an inch thick and I have cut them to be 9 inches by 9 inches. Two of them will be outer pieces and two will be inner pieces. And that may seem confusing right now, but I'll show you what we're going to do with this soon enough. So on each one of the pieces, I have drawn a center line and as well, I have marked the center of the board at four and a half inches. So the very first thing that we want to do on one edge is we're going to use a compass we're going to uh, set it so that it reaches the end of the board perfectly here. So a four and a half inch radius and we are going to draw that four and a half inch radius right here on each one of our boards. This will be the bottom of our hod. So we now want to mark for the legs of our hod. So right from the bottom corner at a 45 degree angle, we're just going to draw a line that will come up to our um, 9 inch diameter circle that we just drew. And these will essentially be the feet of our hod. Um, this bottom will remain flat. So once we get those lines drawn, we can now round these feet off just to make them both a, a little less pointy, and B, um, a little nicer to look at. So using a three quarter inch circle template, we're just going to line it up in the corner here and we're going to round off the end of these feet. And also using that three quarter inch template, we can round off the transition between our nine inch diameter circle and our 45 degree angle for the feet of the hod as well and that will just soften that up a little bit. So you want to mark that on all your pieces. Well at this point you want to pick two pieces for your inner boards and again we'll see what that's all about a little later. So we're going to take it and this one here we'll use as our inner board just because I already have it here and on each side not the top or the bottom, but on each side, we will place a mark half an inch in from the edge of the board. And then using our same center point from our compass, we will readjust our compass in a half an inch to line up with that mark. And we will draw that circle there to meet up with those half inch lines. And we will do that on our two interior pieces. Well at this point now 
We're going to turn this around so that the top of our hod is facing up and we are going to place a line one inch down from the top all the way across. And then right here where that one inch line and our center line intersect, we're going to use an inch and a quarter circle template and we will draw an inch and a quarter circle. And we can do that on each one of our four boards. And now to soften things up again, we're going to use a one inch circle template at this top edge here for the transition between this line at one inch down and the edge of our board. And we're going to use that same one inch template to soften this edge here between where our inch and a quarter circle meets with that line at one inch. And again, as always here, we're going to do this on all four of our boards. But well, we now need to mark for a couple holes. So we're going to just flip this around again and marking from the sides at each bottom edge here, we're going to come in one and a half inches and place a line. And then on that line, we're going to come up five eighths of an inch and we can center punch that mark. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Once we get this one marked, we can go through and do all the rest of our four boards. Well, at this point, we want to concentrate on just our inner pieces. There's two of them, as you already know. We've drawn this line here one half an inch in from each edge. We want to draw a second line that will be nine sixteenths in from that edge. And then we will do the same on the opposite side of the board. And then we will adjust our compass again from uh, this center mark here to line up with the line that we just drew. Just a slight adjustment. And then we will draw that radius. Just like that. And we'll do that on both sections of our inner board. Guys, once you get that done, it's time to drill some holes. So in these marks down here at the bottom on our two inner pieces, we are going to drill a 5 8 through hole at each of these locations. And here at the top, we will drill a through one inch diameter hole. Okay, so for now, that is the inner boards drilling done. We're going to put that aside and we need to do a little bit of drilling on both of our outer boards and in those exact same spots here all the way around both where we drilled the one inch hole and the five eighths hole we're going to drill a hole and countersink to accept a number eight screw well at this point now we need to do a little bit of cutting so i have our interior sections here, the one that we drew the extra circles in the middle. I have a 3 16 inch blade installed and along that line, that one that was half an inch in from the edge, what I'm going to do is we are going to cut as careful as we can right along that line to separate these two pieces. And now we will take the center piece here that we cut out over to the belt sander and we are going to sand up to this line that we put that we measured at 9 16 inch in from the end. So we'll sand right up to that line. Well now it's time to glue our outer board which is the one with our countersunk holes in it and our inner boards together. So what you want to do is take your board and the countersunk holes will face down. That way they're on the outside. We will then coat that entire piece with glue, some wood glue. We're going to line up our boards edge to edge with this outer piece. Line it up edge to edge with the glue in place. Press it down and we don't want to clamp just yet because we don't want anything to shift. So what we're going to do is once we're happy with the alignment, we're going to fire some pin nails in the scrap areas, in the waste areas. So that would be this area here beside the leg and this area right up here 
it just above that line at one inch. So we're gonna fire some pin nails in there to keep it securely in place. Do the same thing all the way around to make sure that it's fully lined up. And once we get the pin nails in place, then we can take our center piece. And our center piece is gonna get lined up with the top, making sure that we have equal distance here on this side and this side, that it's nicely lined up with that 1 16th inch gap all the way around. Once we're happy with the alignment, we're gonna fire some pin nails up here in this waist area. Um, once you get that done, guys, clamp it up as best you can and put that aside now and let it completely dry up. Well, it's the next day and these are completely dried up. And at this point in time, guys, we need to cut the perimeter. So all around the legs in this arch here, along the top, this line at one inch down around our circle, cut the entire perimeter at both. Now you can use your band saw and sand up to the line after cutting it, or you can use a fret saw if you like. But for me, I'm gonna head over to the scroll saw and get these cut and I'll see you when they're done. All right, I've given everything a good sanding and I have the perimeter cut on both of our pieces. So the next pieces you're going to want are a piece of one inch diameter dowel. It's 15 inches long and we have two pieces of 5 8 dowels that are both 15 inches long and they will insert into these holes that we drilled in our inner layer earlier. So what we can do is we can insert these and then using our countersunk holes, first we're going to clamp this together to get a good dry fit and using our countersunk holes here at the ends, we're going to drill pilot holes into our dowels in order to accept the number eight screws that will hold this together and that will be how our frame of this actually holds together. Once we get the uh, drilling done we need to take some measurements and that will be for some pieces that go in here. So basically get an inside to inside measurement here from end to end and then you can meet me at the table saw after that. Well, for these last pieces, I have taken some 5 8 thick maple, some scrap that I had up in the wood rack. I have cut it to be 3 quarters of an inch wide, and right down the middle, on one of the 5 8 wide sides, I have run just the width of the table saw blade 3 8 of an inch deep. Um, I've also put a 1 8 inch round over on all four edges just to soften this up and that measurement that we took inside to inside of our HUD we are going to cut these to that length. In my case it's 14 and 3 16 of an inch. So I'm going to get these cut and then we're going to head over to the HUD and start the final assembly. Well, I've got these three dowels screwed in to one side using some number eight by inch and a quarter screws. And now comes the tricky part. Guys, if you can get help with this, I would suggest it. Uh, it can be a little unruly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit my mesh into that slot that we created by gluing those pieces together. And we're just going to try to shape it around and fit it in the groove. Well, that was a struggle. <laughs> All right. Now, once you get it set to where you want, you want to mark where you want to cut it for the height. Um, I'm going to have this a little lower than the edge, probably about an inch down. So I'm just going to mark that there. We're going to take measurements from the inside of each of these grooves from end to end and that will give us the length to cut it. And then we're just going to use a pair of tin snips to cut this to its proper length. Okay, so I have the mesh cut. Uh, we're going to try this again. You want to try and make sure that it's equal, that it's going to line up so that the top edges are the same on the left and the right. So play with it until you get them like that. 
You want the edges of the basket to be equal. That's a little out of whack, but it's not too, too bad. You know what? I think I'm going to change it up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one side of the basket actually a little higher than the other. And in doing that, it will give an opportunity to fit larger pieces of fruit or vegetables from the garden into this garden hod. Okay, so now here comes the tricky part. So now that we have this put in place, we need to get everything at once aligned in here. Uh, guys, this is a finicky process. Do not kid yourself. This is not going to go together instantly. Uh, you're probably best to line up your dowels first, somewhat, and then carefully go around with the mesh and try to get that lined up. And as I said before, uh, a second set of hands, guys, that would really help. And the worst part of it is that this is just a dry fit for the moment. I don't even know if this is going to fit properly. Okay, we got the top popping out. Okay, so you know what? Let me get this done uh, where I'm not worrying about the camera and I'm not trying to rush. I'm going to get this all lined up and set in place here and then we'll carry on. Well, that was a struggle and a half. Uh, guys, the last thing that we want to do here is install our strips. You can see that this is bowed out and really it's not bowed. It's just the way it's sitting. This punch steel is fighting me. So these strips, this is a very sharp edge and these are going to be the trim pieces that will alleviate that uh, sharp edge from injuring somebody. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these in place over top of our cuts or our punch steel. We're going to glue them in place and clamp everything together. I might even shoot a couple of pin nails in through the end uh, just to help secure it. And then once you get that done, uh, this project is pretty much complete. And once you get it all assembled with these top strips, you should be looking at something that looks like this. Rock solid, that, that mesh there is not going anywhere. It's not gonna bend. Guys, just a great little project and uh, handy too. And there you have it, a garden hod. Guys, these things sell in the stores for in excess of 75 bucks a piece. I can't justify it. I can't justify two pieces of board on the end, a little dowel handle, and some mesh for 75 bucks. That money is better in my pocket. So I spent an afternoon and figured out how to make one. And then over the next couple days in the shop, you know, I put one together and this is what I came up with. And I think it works rather well. And the most important thing is that my wife was happy with it. Now, guys, you have to remember that I probably made this thing for around $10 in materials. That is not including that mesh. I already had the mesh. So how much is mesh? I don't know, but I can't see it being more than $75. And this is probably built way better and way more sturdy than the ones that you get in the store. Not to mention that it's customizable, guys. So. You saw there where I was placing the mesh and I decided I wanted to shift it to make one side higher than the other to give the opportunity to put larger vegetables in the one side. Now, truth be told, that only really afforded me an extra three quarters of an inch, but it still afforded me the three quarters of an inch. And I think I like the way that looks with that kind of uneven side. It gives a little bit of an interesting kind of character to it. Now, guys, you can do whatever you want with this. This doesn't have to be rounded at the bottom with the feet and all that. If you want to make 
a square board on either side and use staples to attach mesh around the outside, then do it. It is your project, it is your hod, and as long as it works for you and it's functional for you and your garden and, and harvesting your vegetables, then what difference does it make what method you use? The methods that I use are merely suggestions. Now, speaking of methods, my original thought on that groove for the mesh, because one of my wife's criteria for making this is she requested that please, let's not have the mesh on the outside of it. My granddaughter will most likely be helping harvest vegetables and I can just see her catching her little fingers on the mesh and cutting herself. So we wanted it concealed and all those sharp edges inside the boards. So my original thought was that I was going to make a template and once I got the template made, I was going to route a groove all the way around. And then I got to thinking, you know what, a lot of people out there don't have a router like that. They don't have the bushings. They don't have the bit. So what would be the simplest way to do this it, where the majority of the people would probably already have the tools? And that's when I came up with the two different halves sandwiched together after cutting the groove and sanding it and gluing it back together. And I think that that's a method that can be applicable to a lot more of the viewers out there and their skill set or their tools or uh, the way their shop is set up. So that is why I chose that method. But you can do it whatever way you please. The important part, as I said, is not how you do it and it's not the method of how you do it. It's just that you get out here to the shop and you do it. Make something. And guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. This one's been a lot of fun. I hope that I have brought it to you uh, soon enough so that you can make one for your garden to harvest your vegetables this year. If not, I apologize for that. And hopefully uh, it'll be a winter project for you to get it ready for next season. Either way, guys, it's a great project and I hope you give it a try. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in this week. It means the world to me. I hope you're going to try this project for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed the content, guys. I hope you've learned something today about methods and how to do things. But more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. Thank you.